What's happening guys? Welcome back to the channel and to another video on the Golf. So, in the last episode, you saw that we sorted out this area of the car here. Got rid of all the rot out of it, rebuilt and remade the top of this uh, wingman area, um, and it's pretty much sorted. A few little bits still tickling, um, but I'm wanting to sort of leave the fine fettling and things until the end, and we'll focus on getting as much of the repair work done as we can. So in this episode, we're gonna be moving on to removing the floor. I've braced the shell as much as I can. Um, it may be not enough, it may be too much, I don't know. Um, what I've done I think is correct, so I shall show you the bracing now, um, and then we'll turn the car on its side and talk a little bit more about what we're gonna be doing. Here we go, this is what we've got in then. So as you can see, we've got this triangular, or this, this diagonal stuff, and the two door bars in, um, in a previous video. I've now added diagonal braces in the doorways and I've also added these braces at the front and also these braces at the back to try and keep everything in the same place. It's all pretty solid, it's all pretty strong. I've hit most of the, well, all of the joins with hammer and nothing broke or moved, which is a great sign. That is sort of that part done. Um, and now we can start moving and thinking about getting these floors out. So what, what am I thinking? What I don't really know what I'm thinking to be perfectly honest. Um, there's not really, I don't think I can see that there's an easy way of doing this. So we're going to make a start under here. Now, I've started, as you can see already, I've started having a bit of a play, trying to get a bit of a game plan going. So I think what I'm going to try and do is, first thing I'm going to do is we're going to try and cut this brace off, get it on the bench and see if it's salvageable. If not, then I'll get a new one on order. Then we're going to have to detach these handbrake cable tubes and then we're going to have to start cutting sort of this floor away. Now we've got bits of repairing to do here um, to this part which is going to stay so we're going to have to rebuild this corner which shouldn't be too bad. But yeah, I'm going to try and get this tub out to start sort of, because as you take bits out other areas become sort of more obvious as to how you're going to sort things. So game plan at the minute is going to be let's just get the actual floor out if we can. This central brace that runs along here is going to stay in um, for now. So my plan with the sill is going to be, here obviously it's shot, it's shot down here, but the rest of it is pretty solid, it's not too bad. This front corner may need sorting as well, but this part here that's going to be seen, I don't want to go cutting up into the body too much. So what I'm thinking is, we are going to be cutting this sill off below or on this trim line. Um, just to keep all the repair work underneath and as out of vision, if you like, as possible um, to hopefully help with any warping or bad welding by me or the pigeon. So, first things first, let's try and get this, this part off, get the handbrake tubes detached, it, detached, detached, it? detached, and then um, we'll start cutting the floor out. Um, so I'll just set you up in a corner and we'll just make a start. Done something, but now I'm left with an empty heart. No making amends, no waking up beside you and holding you till we forget it all. How could I know there was no second chances? Like dominoes, my life got really scattered. You couldn't keep the door shut. So come on, why won't you reappear? Things that I said came out totally wrong. Can't speak of the truth when it's tainted. I fell into a big black hole. It got me stone cold. And welcome to a new day. So yesterday I got a load of cutting done, but I figured you didn't need to see hours of me cutting and drilling and grinding away uh, at the car. So let's show you what I did. So we've now got a massive hole in the floor where the passenger side floor once was. As you can see, I've also removed the inner sill as well. Now, 
I guarantee I'll get comments saying, did you need to remove the whole thing? Was it that bad? Uh, it was, it had gone all the way along the bottom edge. The top was fine, but in my head, I might as well replace the whole thing instead of replacing the bottom half. Um, so we might as well have done what we've done. Now it was a right pain to get out. As you can see at the back there, it's there's bits overlap, bits inside bits. It, it was a nightmare to get out. It took quite a while. This central support brace is still in the car. I've just got to tidy this end up a little bit. Um, little tabs there for the wiring to be held onto. Um, and we've got to tidy up this corner. Now the floor that we're putting in is this piece here and not this underneath piece, as you can see through those holes. So I think instead of coming all the way up, this is in good condition, we're gonna come straight across here um, to replace that floor. There's obviously this, we've gotta repair this area here. This is all nice and all good. This is obviously the bit we've repaired. So as you can see here, I've only cut part of the silhouette. This came along to about this point and then dropped down. Um, so I've cut along here just to give me a bit of access to be able to see what was going on. And then I'm thinking now, I'm, I've put this line on, I think this is where I'm gonna be cutting and replacing this part of the sill too. Um, it's solid everywhere else apart from there's a hole, just a little tiny pinhole there. Um, but I'm cutting it just below where the there's a, there's a trim that goes on here will be. My idea being I don't want to be cutting up like that into the body if I don't need to because it's pretty solid already. I've also drawn the arch on, the arch cover. Um, which is then I'm going to be cutting this and replacing this arch inside that. So when the plastic cover goes on, it hides any potential joints. So I am going to be trying to get the joints as good as I can. But in my head, there's no point in me cutting up here and risk seeing a join on a flat panel when I can cut here, into, still into good metal, weld this replacement piece in, and then never have the worry of it ever being seen of a join. Same down here. There's going to be a trim along here. So instead of me coming up here and replacing all of this, if I just replace this piece, then surely that's better. But that's, that's what I'm doing anyway. I'm not cutting the rest of it out. Plus, not cutting all of this out helps to keep the door opening the right size. So, like I say, I've not filmed a massive amount of me doing what I've done because there's been a lot of sitting around, a lot of head scratching, a lot of trying this, trying that. And I'm sort of making it up as I go along. I may have cut too much out. I may not have cut enough out. But let me roll the car over and I'll show you what else I've done on the underneath. So here is the underside of the car. We've got a nice big, big hole where the floor used to be. Coming to the back, you've got, uh, we've had to cut bits of uh, the inner arch out. This piece I've got as a complete replacement. This piece we're going to have to make this bottom corner again. Well, this inner strengthening piece here, which uh, just sort of ties a few bits together, I think. You've got the seat belt, what I believe is the seat belt anchoring point there, and you've also got this lump that goes somewhere in about there that sits onto the this piece of metal here that's left is what's left of this inner sill that goes on here. So we've got to make sure that goes back on in the right place to hold the rear beam in place. Um, this needs repairs to it as well. And I have looked and I can't find one of these anywhere. So we are going to be re making some repair panels to that piece. Coming along the sill, it's looking pretty good inside. Um, and then at the front, we've got all this mess to sort out as well. So you've got, I'm going to have to take this off because this is shot. So we're going to have to remake this piece here with this return lip on. Um, we've got to get the inner floor off of this piece. I've cut a patch out of here that then also needs fixing, which we're going to make bigger and go all the way around that so we know it's all correct. Um, still going to get this piece of what's left of the inner sill off, tidy it all up. So I know on the rest of the car I've been making it up as I go along, but on this bit I really am making it up as I go along. It's really, I'm really not sure what to be saying to you guys, to be honest. It's, the other bits have been sort of a job. This is going to drag on for a good couple of weeks, I think, this area alone. Because I can't just replace the floor, because I've got to replace the inner sill. But I can't replace just place the inner sill, because I've got to repair all these bits at the front. And I can't just replace the inner sill, because I've got to repair all these bits at the back. Which then leads on to, I've got to repair the inner arch. Which then leads on to, I've got to cut all the rear panel away. It just goes on and on and on and on and keeps sort of building um, 
and building and building and building into that just a bit of a bigger job every time you do anything. Right, so I've removed a couple of bits that I wanted to get off. Um, we've removed the lifting point, which we need to sort of clean up, sort out and get ready to go back on it. But we've got to replace all of this section here, which we're going to have to make because I can't get hold of it anywhere. First thing I'm going to do, I think, is we're going to make a panel to go over this. I'm going to try this one a different way that someone suggested of making the panel before you make the repair panel before you go cutting the hole in the car. So we'll give that a go and see how I get on with that. And there's the panel that's been made, sat on the car, or clamped on the car in the place. Looks pretty good, fits as, as I wanted it to. So I've drawn around that with Sharpie. See there, so we'll get the grind up, cut that out now, um, and then put the new plate on. So there's the hole that we've cut, looking oh, some metal, a hole in some metal. Um, I've started cleaning a bit up, um, it does need a lot more cleaning and a lot more attention. Um, we can't go welding this on yet because we've got the floors to sort out and things like that, but offer it on and it fits pretty damn well. Has been on before, obviously, and I've manipulated it a few times but yeah it fits fits mega good idea for doing it whoever it was that suggested that thank you very much um other areas i think it may still be beneficial to cut the area out first but this one yeah pretty, pretty pleased with the way that, that that's gone down um i can't go welding this on yet as i said because we've got to take the inner floor out to replace that and we've then got to start working on doing something with this corner now i'm thinking i'm going to probably be doing this in patches instead of trying to fabricate this whole corner in one um at the minute i'm thinking patches that may change as things do so we shall be beginning on that in a moment now i've just offered this in which is obviously the floor section to sort of see, go around and have a look inside as to where it sits, where it sort of goes. Now you can't gauge exactly where it's gonna go because this is oversized to the hole. The hole needs neatening up a bit. This needs then trimming to the hole. Um, and because we've not got the sill on, it's not in the right, the inner sill, it's not in the right place and things, but it gives me a bit of an idea. So I've slid this in. Yeah, it's nowhere near in the right place, it's too low down, it's all sorts, pushed it in to sort of see inside where's what. I think I've now formed the next stage of the game plan. So I think what I'm going to do, now what I'm thinking, instead of what I said before, which was cutting straight up here and keeping all of this, I'm going to cut all of this away. So we're going to cut around this sort of seam, 10 or 20 mil off this edge up down here, and then come across and back down to get rid of all of this section because i figure the more new metal it goes in the better um and then we can then be able to get in and fix this corner a little easier is my thinking anyway so i probably won't film that bit because it's going to be a pain to get the camera in there while and i've got to climb through this jungle gym that i've decided to put inside the car um so we're going to get this bit cut out and then you'll join me when it's been removed. So I laid the car down flat. There is that piece removed. Like I say, we've removed more than we thought we were going to. Um, left a bit of a lip round it. Obviously, it's not completely perfect in shape. We're going to have to shape it to make the other floor fit. But that's out, creating a space for the new floor to go. So let's get the car rolled over and we'll make a start on repairing this lower corner. So I've Cut a bit out of card um, and sort of laid it over. Now, I want it, I've not taken into account this fold. I don't want to be welding or making a panel that's halfway on a fold because trying to form half of a fold will be a bit difficult, I think. So when we transfer it onto steel, it'll be the old washer and pen trick to extend it by whatever that distance is. Um, everything else seems to be in about the right place obviously we need to trim this down but i want to leave it full size for now so uh, we've got a little bit extra to go trimming back and a bit of leverage um and um then also i've made another one which is going to be a second piece which is going to go there because i don't want to go replacing the whole area it's just wasting steel so i'm going to do this in two pieces um, but first thing we're going to do is cut this piece out because 
we've got this indent here to try and recreate and we've got this indent here to try and recreate as well and I've got an idea for that hopefully it'll work it's bigger than the other one was so hopefully it won't stress the metal too much um, but let's get this cut out of steel and then get all the bits together to try and form this indent right then after a few hours of fettling we've got one paper template and we've now got one piece of metal to replace this piece so side by side you've got this piece is obviously then going to go over and re replace this piece we're going to bring it up a little bit so we're not cutting right the way down here this is this piece we've got an inset piece here which is for this which that fits into nicely as well so we'll re we'll sort that out and put that back in um, but yeah I am pretty pleased with the way that that's turned out so how have I made this in a very basic workshop with some very basic tools let's go and show you so welcome over to the bench so first thing I did was obviously use the card template to cut the shape out gave it a little bit extra to create edges and things that I couldn't uh, that I hadn't put onto that template um, I then went to the car and measured this piece that we wanted to replicate I then the only way I could think of doing it was I've got a piece of plywood and a bottle router with a router cutter in it and I routed out this pocket into this these lines obviously are all extensions of that shape and then drew the same lines I went onto the car and worked out where this wanted to be and drew the lines onto this piece so I could then lay this over the top and get the lines somewhere in the right place I then made this which is just a piece of plywood it's cracked now and it's broken but a piece of plywood 25mm ply with angles all the way around it put the piece of steel in the right place over it like that and then used a hammer and hammered it and moved it all about and hammered it to get that shape to the right shape bottomed out there which was the right depth 7mm so that's how I created that one then again exactly the same thing there's this ever so slightly dropped part here again exactly the same thing before obviously this lip was on um, all the same process put it on worked out where it wanted to be on the car drew lines all over it drew lines on that put that on and again used that piece of plywood to go around and just hammer it into the correct shape then if you can see on there we've got all this curving shape going on same process we did in previous video on another repair got ourselves a plywood template or I don't know what it's called, book, we'll go American, called book um, routed out a relief for that panel so that it sat flat we got the grinder because on the car there's a radius to the part As you can see there there's quite a, a profound radius in there so if you went hammering that it'd be too sharp so I got the grinder and I routed with the sanding disc on and I put a, a, a radius on it and then clamped the two together and slowly started working and beating it round and is it A1 perfect? No, it's not A1 perfect. I've not stamped it out. I've made it by hand with some basic tools. But I think it looks pretty darn good. So that panel is going to go there and sort out all of these rust issues that are in this. We've also got rust up here. We've got rust coming around here where we'd probably get rid of a lot of it with this lip. But I'd like to take it a little bit more. So we now have got another template which is going to repl replace this piece here again it's oversized because we're going to trim them back in um, but now we need to make this piece so we've got a little fold and a bigger fold um, and then we've got a slight fold here as well so now i'm going to go and make this and then hopefully once we've got this made i'll be able to then start cutting this down to the size that i want offering it on and working out cutting this piece out cutting this piece out and hopefully today we'll be able to start getting something back on the car so we've fabricated both parts now that's that little one that goes just there and this one obviously goes here i've gone round and i've trimmed this down a bit we've marked the line on where we're going to go to 
and cut to. So to get the grinder, I'm going to cut just off them lines and then we'll offer the panels in and see where they are and manipulating to get them right. And then we'll start cutting them back to get them into the correct place. Um, but yeah, it's looking pretty decent at the minute. So swap over to the GoPro, get the grinder up and start making some cuts. And there it is, that bit cut out. New piece clamped in place um, as best as I can. Um, this new plate down here as well, um, which we made earlier. But I'm pretty happy with the way that's, that's, that's fitting, I think. So what I'm gonna do now is get the weld up, chuck a few tacks in just to hold that in place, um, and then we'll cut this piece out and start, uh, start tacking that one in as well. Now I'm only gonna tack these in, I'm not fully welding them yet because I've got everything else going on and I'll weld it all up at once, but I want to make sure it's in the right place. I'm going to go weld it and then I'm to alter something. So let's tack them in, cut this next bit out and get our next bit on, and then we're well on our way. So there's that piece tacked in now in place. Um, apparently I've decided to tack it to uh, the bit of metal that I'm just about to cut out, which is gonna make things even easier than they already are. Um, so we shall now get the grinder and cut along here. We've got some spot welds here to get rid of, I think. And then hopefully that piece will just come out uh, and then we can offer in the new piece. Here's one I made earlier, um, which is pretty much the same. It needs a bit of trimming, obviously. Um, but it's better to be trimming it than um, to put more on, I suppose. So let's get this uh, this bit cut out. Ready? Just put the new piece in. So that's that area cut out. We've tidied and cleaned this, and we've got to repair this now because there's a split here, and there's a hole in it here, and there's a bit of something going on down here. So I've made a little patch panel, which is going to go just there. So we're gonna mark this, cut this out, get this welded in and dressed, then we can then put this piece on. So that's that bit sort of in, um, that piece panel is in there, um, all welded, all dressed and all sorted. Uh, this panel now, which is, that's been primed and this has been primed with weld free primer. This now goes on there like that. Now I said I wasn't gonna fully weld this and this, but I think I'm gonna fully weld them now so I can dress them. Um, and that's that little area sort of dealt with then. Um, so let's just get on with welding them on and get this bit done. So there is that all welded in now. Um, some welds look really good, some welds don't look the best, um, but I've been I've playing with different settings and different techniques and things on it, so I'm pretty happy with the way we've got this going now. So now I'm gonna get into it, get it all dressed, um, and then we'll chuck some primer on it, and hopefully it's nice and seamless. And there we have that all in, welded, dressed, and ready for some primer. So I am well pleased with how that's turned out. Obviously every, this was all rusty. Um, there was rust all around here, rust up here. We fixed all of that and we're now back to some solid metal. So let me chuck some primer on this now. There it is, primed, done, finished. Um, little bit of hole fill in here to do. Um, I've got to obviously put this mounting point back on as well, but I'm not going to do that until I've got that part all nice and cleaned up and we'll get it back in. Still got this piece here to weld in as well, but that corner is repaired. So I'm well happy with how that's turned out. It's not A1 absolute factory perfect, but for the tools we've got, the skills we've got, I'm pretty happy with that. It look, look it looks like the corner again. It's, uh, it's what was there when it's all filled and painted. Hopefully, you'll never know. It's been repaired. That's what I want, anyway. I want to say a massive thank you to Sealy Tools for the supply of some of the tools that I've used to enable me to be able to create this piece and to sort the rust issues on this car out. If you're not already, do go over and have a look at their website. Um, they do sell some great tools at some really good prices. I also want to say a massive thank you to Heritage Parts Centre for sponsoring the restoration of this Mark 1 Golf GTI. I've had another delivery of parts come in today, so we've got battery tray, uh, an inner wing repair, and then the wing for the side that we've been working on. 
I put it all on, I put the door back on, and I'm happy to say everything fits and is where it should be. So yeah, massive shout out to those guys. Pretty much without them, this wouldn't be possible. Um, and without you guys, working with these wouldn't be possible as well. Do remember, if you need anything for your classic Volkswagen or Porsche, go to heritagepartcentre.com where using the code CHAMBERS at the checkout will get you 10% off your order. Massive thank you to those guys for helping with us and for giving us the code to give back to you guys as a little thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this episode um, and me fixing that lower corner. Maybe you've learned something. I know I've learned a lot from this one. Um, if you've enjoyed what we are doing and you're not already subscribed, do please consider clicking the subscribe button um, and press that little bell to get notified of when we post a video. We're chasing down 20,000 subscribers and every single one of you that subscribes helps us get to that number. I'm aiming to get there by Christmas. Let's see if we can do it. Thank you all so much as well for liking and commenting on the videos. It all massively, massively helps within YouTube's algorithm of getting us out to other people that wouldn't know about us and haven't seen us before and helping us get to that 20,000 subscriber target. As you can see, sporting a new bit of merch, the DAC Industries uh, woolly hats. I had quite a few comments on these when I appeared on camera wearing a woolly hat saying, uh, why don't you get some made with a logo in? So I've done that. We've got burgundy and I've also got black ones. They look blue for some reason, but they're black. All of the info for those is in the description. Um, do please, if you want to order one, either drop me a DM on Instagram at dandaa.chambers or drop me an email, which is in my About Me page on YouTube. Um, just to check because I've not ordered many um, and I don't want to go have loads of people start sending sending money in and buying them when I've not got any stock left. So do please uh, just drop me a DM or an email just to check that we've still got stock of those. We'll leave that one there then guys. Thank you all so much. If this is the first video you've seen of this channel or of this series, click here for a link to episode one of this restoration saga. Until next time guys, enjoy. <laughs>